Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Everyday Black History. Now today on Everyday Black History, we're going to be highlighting a woman by the name of Bessie Blount Griffin. And Bessie Blount Griffin wore many hats. She was a writer, a physical therapist, an inventor, and a forensic scientist. Now let's get into a little bit of background information on her. She was born uh, Bessie Virginia Blount. Uh, November 24th, 1914, in Hickory, Virginia. Now, she attended uh, um, uh, Diggs Chapel Elementary School in Hickory, Virginia, and it was an educational facility built uh, after the Civil War for the um, opportunity for educational advancement for black American children. Now, while going to school there, she was reprimanded by one of her teachers for writing with her left hand um, by uh, rap, by hitting her on the knuckles. That was a thing that, you know, teachers used to actually be able to discipline the kids. So the teacher disciplined her by hitting her on the knuckles um, uh, to teach her proper etiquette. So uh, she took advantage of this moment and uh, took the challenge of making herself ambidextrous and by teaching herself how to write with both her right and her left hand. And she even taught herself... Uh, uh, other other remarkable skills, which we'll get into. Now, her right hand was her primary hand to to write with, but uh, she got very she got very uh, good at writing with her left hand just as well as with her right. And anybody who's right-handed knows it's hard to write with the left and vice versa. But now, in addition to teaching herself the skill to write with without with um with both her hands, she also taught herself how to write without the use of her hands at all. She taught herself how to hold a pencil with her teeth and her feet. So she taught herself how to write with her teeth and her feet, <laughs> which is amazing. I mean, can you imagine seeing that? Now, after the sixth grade, um, all of the academic resources were um, depleted uh, the, the, that they were given to um, black American children. So uh, unfortunately, she had to stop her education. And that was common back then for a lot of uh, black American children. A lot of times they had to stop working to work on a farm with the family or because there, there just simply wasn't enough resources to continue the education. But her family relocated to North New Jersey where she um, remained self-taught and obtained her, G, her GED. She then attended the Community Kennedy Memorial Hospital's nursing program in Newark, New Jersey. And after obtaining her nursing degree, she continued her education at Panzer College of Physical Education and Hygiene in East Orange, New Jersey, and became a physical therapist. Now, um, this is the first part of her career. You know, during her career as a physical therapist, she um, she worked during World War II, and many of the soldiers that came home were came home as amputees. You know, wounded in combat. And as a part of her physical therapy exercises, she taught the veterans who lost the ability to use their hands new ways to perform everyday tasks by substituting the use of their hands for, um, for the use of their teeth or their feet. And as she worked these days, she observed that one of the biggest challenges um, for patients in that, that were amputees was the task of eating without assistance from other people. Um, so it, it was dire to many that they regained the ability to feed themselves. Um, I mean, because obviously having the ability to feed yourself uh, gives you an independence and self-esteem. Obviously, it's something we take for granted, but imagine losing that ability. So it was this that led her to um, the several of the inventions that she invented. Um, now, while working at the Bronx Hospital in New York, she invented an electric self-feeding apparatus to help amputees feed themselves. She came up with a device that consisted of a tube, that transported, indivi that transported individual bites of food to the patient's mouth. Now, all the patient would need to do is bite down on the tube and the food would dispense to the mouthpiece with an attached machine that would dispense the next portion of food to the patient's mouth when prompted. The American Veterans Administration declined her invention, so she then sold it to the French government. And she stated that this accomplishment showed that a black woman can invent something for the benefit of humankind. Her next invention was a way for uh, an injured or an ill patient to hold something close to the face using a portable recept receptacle support. 
Now, this device, the way it was designed, it hung around a person's neck with an attachment that supported a cup or a bowl. In April 1951, she was granted a patent for this invention. Now, during her career as a physical therapist, she uh, became friendly with Thomas Edison's son, Theodore Miller Edison. And uh, they became close friends. And during the time she spent in, um, in, in Theodore Edison's home, she invented the uh, Emesis Basin. And uh, her, her version was a disposable cardboard, card, cardboard model made out of flour, water, and a newspaper that was baked until the material was hard. Once again, she tried to sell it to, um, you know, the uh, U.S. Um, uh, companies, but none of them showed any inventions, uh, none of them showed any interest, excuse me. So she sold the rights to her invention to a company in Belgium, and to this day, her design is still being used in Belgian hospitals. Now, uh, later on, uh, she started a second career in law enforcement. Uh, she in in, a 19, in 1969, she began conveying, conveying uh, forensic science research for police departments in New Jersey as well as in Virginia. And uh, as she worked with patients in the past, uh, showing them how to be uh, ambidextrous and how to write with their teeth or write with their feet, she began to observe the close comparison between physical health and, and handwriting characteristics. So from her point of view, she saw how a, a person's handwriting reflected upon their state of health. And this discovery inspired her to publish a technical paper on uh, medical graphology. And after the publication of this paper, her career in forensics um, quickly took off. And um, in 1969 and, and, and thereafter, for many years thereafter, she was assisting police departments in uh, Norfolk, Virginia, uh, Vinland, New Jersey, and, and later, even uh, the Portsmouth, Virginia Police Department um, made her their chief examiner uh, many years later because of her expertise. In 1977, the Metropolitan Police Forensic Science Laboratory invited uh, Bessie Blount to join them in London for advanced studies in graphology. And after that, she even started her own business. As that's why I mentioned, she's an entrepreneur. She used her forensics exper experience to examine documents and slave papers from the pre-Civil War era. And she operated this business up until the age of 83 years old. Now, um, as we mentioned, she the inventions that she um, invented and received patents for, she uh, made numerous attempts to spark the interest of the American Veterans Association um, in her inventions, but they were reluctant, despite the device's evident beneficial impact that it would you know, give to people's lives. Who knows why they weren't interested? Maybe because she was black, maybe because she was a woman, maybe because she was a black woman, we don't know. But they took no interest in her invention, so that's why she sold, sold them to France and to Belgium. Um, she even appeared on um, a uh, Philadelphia television program called The Big Idea. And she was the first uh, black American woman to make an appearance on the show where she demonstrated her ideas. And um, she donated rights to both her inventions, as I mentioned, to the French government. And she even stated again on that, on that uh, Philadelphia program, a black woman can invent something for the benefit of humankind. Bessie Blount lived a long life, and she died at the age of 95 on December 30th, 2009, at her home in Newfield, New Jersey. But we can clearly see her influence, we can clearly see her accomplishments and how big they were. She, you know, physical therapist, uh, inventor of multiple inventions, uh, forensics um, expert, as well as an entrepreneur starting her own business, helping identify, you know, slave uh, papers and helping people trace their lineage back. So, Bessie Blount Griffin, we thank you for your contribution to black history and black culture, and we salute you. And that concludes this episode of Everyday Black History. Uh, please tune in again as we have many YouTube. We have a few videos on YouTube talking about black history and, and talking about our culture. So definitely, uh, you know, tune into those and check those out. We uh, also um, also have an ebook out, uh, Everyday Black History, African-American Women Inventors. And in, and in fact, Bessie Blount is highlighted in that book for her inventions. And it talk um, a little bit more in detail in the book about her inventions and her, her relationship with... Um, 
uh, with her patients, with Thomas, Ed uh, Thomas Edison's son, um, and there's many other um, um, black American women inventors that were lost through history and forgotten uh, through history, who, but, uh, who invented things that uh, changed our lives during that time and even to this day. Uh, so definitely check it out. It's on Amazon. Um, it's the Kindle version. The paperback version is coming soon. But uh, check it out on Amazon. Everyday Black History, African American Women Inventors. Um, but thank you so, um, so far for the support. And stay tuned for the next episode.